Hi y'all, my name is Karen. I'm a lead instructor at the CMC's Youth Education Program and today I'm going to talk about what it takes to climb a 14er. So let's get started. So a 14er is any peak that's over 14,000 feet high in elevation um, and we have a lot of these here in Colorado. We have 58. That's the most that any other state has. So Naturally, hiking a 14er is a pretty special thing for us here in Colorado and a lot of people like to take on the challenge of trying to climb and hike to the top of as many 14ers as they can while they're here in Colorado. So in this video, I want to talk about how to pick a 14er, um, what are some good ones to get started out, maybe this is your first 14er that you want to tackle. We're going to talk about how to train for a 14er so that you're prepared for the challenge. We're going to talk about what you might bring with you when you go to hike a 14er and some important safety and stewardship things that you're going to want to know before you take off to tackle the summit challenge. So first thing we need to do when we want to hike a 14er is pick a 14er that seems like it's going to be a good fit for us. So to start narrowing down what 14er you might want to pick, um, a good way to start out is to pick one that has a difficulty level that is appropriate for you and your group. All 14ers are difficult and require a lot of endurance and strength, so they're all a good challenge, but some are a lot more difficult than others and might not be right for you and your group when you're starting out. So to determine difficulty, one of the ways that we do that is through the first through fifth class rating scale. So class one and class two are great places to start out when you're picking a 14er. Class one is simple hiking, just like you would do in your backyard or around the neighborhood. Class two is hiking with the occasional use of your hands. There might be a little bit of loose rock or some route finding, um, as you can see in this picture right here. Class three is considered scrambling. Um, there might be a little bit of exposure. There might be some loose rock. So you'll need to start gaining some comfortability in the mountains and moving through more difficult terrain when you move into class three territory. Class four is simple climbing, um, so nothing difficult, but there might be some exposure and you'll definitely be using your hands and your feet on this route. And then class five is where rock climbing really begins. Um, climbers will use a rope and belay each other using safety equipment. All right, so once we've narrowed down the four teenagers that are in the first or second class rating scale, the next thing that's good to look at when picking your 14er is how much length is involved in your hike, how many miles you're going to have to walk to get to the top and back from your 14er. Um, you can easily find this out in a trail description, so that's an important thing to consider. Even if your 14er is first class easy hiking, if you have to hike 10 or 15 miles, that's a pretty great distance and might not be the best one to start with. Once you find some 14ers that are a reasonable length for you, the next thing that you want to look at is how much elevation you have to gain to get to the top of your 14er. Um, so hiking at elevation, I'm going to talk more about in a minute, but it's pretty difficult um, and going up a lot of the elevation takes a lot of work. Imagine hiking up a lot and a lot of stairs all in a row. It's pretty tiring um, and it's definitely worth it when you get to the top. But picking a 14er that requires a lot of elevation gain can be pretty difficult. Um, so that's a good thing to consider when you're picking your 14er as well. Lastly, you want to consider where the 14er is in comparison to where you live. Um, so there's 14ers all over Colorado. As you can see from this map, we have some that are really close to the front range and we have some that are way down in southern Colorado. All of them are really beautiful. They're going to be awesome places to explore. Um, so make sure that you talk with whoever you're going to do this hike with and make sure that the 14er you're picking is a reasonable distance from where you live. Um, so it's good to map the directions from your house to the trailhead of the 14er and make sure to check out the road conditions as well. Some roads to get up to 14ers require a high clearance of vehicle. So depending on what car you might be driving or how you might be getting there, it's going to be really important to make sure um, that you pick a 14er that's going to be suitable for you and your group. Let's talk a little bit about what you need to prepare before you head out for your trip. 
Um, so gear is super important when you head out on a 14er, you're going into the wilderness. Um, so you need to make sure that you have the right gear with you. The 10 essentials are 10 essential things that you'll always want to have with you when you're out in the wilderness, um, regardless of where you're going, how far away you're going, how long you're going to be out. You're going to want to make sure you have these 10 things. So you always want to make sure that you have some form of navigation. Um, these things can be on your phone. You have a compass ability on most, most smartphones. Um, and it's pretty easy to find maps um, digitally as well. But you want to think and make sure that that phone is going to be able to have the charge to last all day long. So if you do go for a digital copy um, of your map and compass, your navigation, you're going to want to make sure you have a way to charge whoever's phone that information is on so that it lasts all day long. Next, you want to have a form of light. Um, so a headlamp or a flashlight are going to be really essential. Um, a lot of times you start hiking 14ers when it's still a little bit dark out because it's really early in the morning. Next, you want to make sure you have sun protection. That includes a baseball hat to cover your face, sunscreen, and lip balm. Uh, maybe a long sleeve shirt that is pretty light so you can wear it throughout the day even when it's warm outside. You always want to have a first aid kit with you. This is super, super important. Um, sometimes unexpected things happen so you want to be prepared. Um, next, you want to make sure that someone in your group has a knife or some form of repair kit for gear. You want to have some sort of a fire starter. Um, this is a good thing for an adult to carry a lighter or some matches. And you want to make sure that you have some sort of shelter. So this can be just a simple emergency blanket. You always want to make sure that you have extra food with you. <laughs> Having extra water is very, very important. And then lastly, you want to make sure you have lots of layers, extra warm clothes, and rain gear with you at all times. Um, we all know that the Colorado weather, especially in the mountains, can be really, really unpredictable. So we want to be prepared. Beyond our 10 essentials, we want to make sure that we have the right food and water when we're out on our hike. So in terms of water, a good rule of thumb is that you need one to two liters for every three hours that you're out. Um, on an adventure. So you want to plan accordingly um, for how long your hike is going to take and make sure that you have a little extra just in case your hike takes longer than you expect it to. Eating the right food is also really important um, when you're partaking on hiking a 14er. This can be a long day, it can be a lot of work, um, and it's also nice to have a rewarding meal or a snack when you get to the top of the 14er so that you can celebrate your accomplishment. So you want to make sure you have lots of protein, lots of carbs, um, and some salty snacks as well. Um, in addition to having the right food when you're hiking, you also want to make sure that you're eating right before you head out on your 14er. So having a good dinner the night before you head out, drinking plenty of water and making sure you're hydrated are really going to help you when you head out for this challenge. So a good way to make sure that you are going to be prepared for this challenge is to plan three big kind of training goal days. First, just trying to cover the amount of miles that you'll need to cover in your 14er summit round trip. That means to the top and back. Um, this can be just walking around your neighborhood or your local park or open space. Next, you want to practice how much elevation you're going to have to gain to get to the top of your 14er. Um, so you can use smartphone apps such as Strava um, to track how much elevation you're gaining. And again, you can use this uh, at local spaces. All you need is a set of stairs or a local hill to practice gaining the elevation that you're going to need to get to the top of your 14er. The last big training day that you want to try to complete before you head out on your 14er is to kind of put those two things together. So when you're out hiking your 14er in real life, you're going to be dealing with a lot of high elevation. It's going to make it harder for you to exercise. So you want to practice how much effort it's going to take for you to get to the top of your 14er at a lower elevation first. So for your last training day, I would challenge you to try to hike up as much elevation as you're going to need to get to the top of your 14er and cover as many miles as you'll need to get there and back. Lastly, 
it's important to discuss the timing of your 14er. That's a really important part of being prepared for your journey. So a good rule of thumb when you're estimating how long it's going to take you to hike somewhere is that it typically takes about 30 minutes to walk a mile um, and it typically takes about one hour to go up each 1,000 feet of elevation. Um, and then beyond this, you also need to add in the time that you want to take for water breaks, snack breaks, and a lunch break. Um, so by doing some simple calculations with this, you can figure out approximately how long it's going to take you to do your 14-er. Um, but it's important to always err on the side of caution and make sure that you are setting reasonable goals for yourself and your group and knowing when to turn around if it's necessary. So. The next thing that I want to talk about in preparing for our 14er is safety and stewardship. So when we move up to higher elevations, it can really affect our body and we can actually get something called altitude sickness. So altitude sickness um, just occurs when you move up a lot of elevation in a short amount of time. This can affect you regardless of how old you are, regardless of how fit you are, regardless of how many mountains you may have climbed before. Um, so I've been climbing mountains for a really long time. I've gone as high as 18,000 feet and I still am prone to getting altitude sickness here uh, in Colorado when I'm hiking 14ers. So this can really happen to anyone. It doesn't mean that you're out of shape or that you're not prepared. It just occurs because we're not used to being at high elevations. When you're out on your 14er day, it's important to understand the signs of altitude sickness. Um, so a really common time of altitude sickness is if someone in your group or yourself gets a really sudden and severe headache. This is the most common sign of altitude sickness. Other signs that someone might have altitude sickness are that they're dizzy, they're really tired, it's hard for them to breathe, and they might not be super hungry at all. Um, so even though they're working really hard, they might not have an appetite, they might say no to snacks, or lunch, and that can be a really telltale sign that someone might have altitude sickness. So if you're noting, noticing signs of altitude sickness in anyone in your group, it's really important to stop and take some time to rest um, and let that person adjust. If that person is not feeling better, then the only way that you can help them is by going down. Um, if you continue going to a higher elevation with someone that has altitude sickness, more severe illnesses can occur and it can be really dangerous. So you want to make sure to take altitude sickness seriously, um, be aware of the signs in your group, and then go down if that person is not getting better. Unfortunately, that might mean that you might not make it to the summit, but the safety of yourself and your group is always the most important thing. Beyond the altitude sickness, um, a really common thing to be aware of when you're hiking a 14er is lightning and thunderstorms, big changes up in the weather that can occur in Colorado really suddenly. Um, so in 14er season, that's usually the summertime, there's a lot of thunderstorms that occur in the afternoon. So when you're heading out to hike a 14er, uh, you typically are going above tree line, which means you don't have the safety of trees and shelter around you. So you're going to want to make sure that you are up to where you want to be and back down before noon. But if there's any sign of a thunderstorm in the forecast, it's best to just pick another day to do your trip. So always check the weather before you head out. Be aware of any thunderstorms and make sure that when you head up to do a 14er, you plan to summit early and be down below tree line before noon. Another thing that I want to talk about in terms of safety when hiking 14ers is hydration and dehydration. Um, so when you are at a higher elevation, your body needs more water um, than it would at a lower elevation. So make sure you're bringing plenty of water, make sure you're drinking that water. The last thing I want to talk about before you head out and start preparing for your 14er is the seven leave no trace principles. Um, so leave no trace is an aspect of outdoor stewardship that's really important for us to continue being able to play and enjoy these outdoor spaces that we're so lucky to have here in Colorado. So the seven leave no trace principles are plan ahead and prepare, travel and camp on durable surfaces, 
dispose of waste properly, leave what you find, minimize campfire impacts, respect wildlife, and be considerate of other visitors. If you visit leavenotrace.com, you can get a lot more specific information on what these principles mean. But the main goal of the Leave No Trace principles is to leave a place just the way you found it, making as little impact as you possibly can. All right, so you're ready to do your 14er? If you are, go ahead and check out the 14ers worksheet that I have linked with this video. I'm just gonna help you plan your 14er, make sure that you're prepared for it mentally and physically, help you plan what you're gonna eat and what you're gonna wear so that you are ready for a safe and successful summit. So happy hiking.